Good morning everyone. Today we're going to discuss how the body balances your water, electrolytes, and briefly introduce you to some of the concepts of acid-base balance. Let's start with water. The water content of the body is approximately 60% for males and 50% for females. And that's an estimation. You can find different numbers in different texts. It depends on the makeup of the individual because muscle has more water than fat tissue. Individuals with a greater muscle mass will have greater water content and because males generally have more muscle mass than females, males generally have a greater percentage of water. We'll use the figures above for any calculations that we do in this module. And again, that's for males 60%, for females 50%. So what that means is that if you take the weight in kilograms and multiply that by 0.5 that would give you a female's water content in liters. So when we get to doing calculations please be sure that you specify units. Again if the weight is in kilograms after your calculation using the figures above the water content will be in liters. Now, we can take that water content and look at it in a variety of different ways. You can look at water that's contained inside cells and compare that to the water that's found outside cells. If we do that, we see that two-thirds of the total body water, that is two-thirds of that 50% for women or 60% for men is found inside cells and one-third is found outside cells. It's an approximation but it's close enough and it's certainly easier to work with one-third and two-thirds than it is to work with 37% and 63%. So remember we call the water inside cells intracellular fluid and we call the water outside cells extracellular fluid and you've been introduced to these terms in the past. You can also take the water that's found outside cells and you can divide that into various components as well. So again two-thirds of the total body water is found inside cells and one-third outside cells. Of that one-third 20%, that's 20% of the one-third now, 20% is found in the vascular system. It's found in plasma. The remaining 80% of extracellular fluid is found in fluid that surrounds the cells. That's the interstitial fluid. It's also found in the lymphatic system. And you can find water in what are called special compartments or special fluids. These special fluids are fluids like the fluids in your eye or the fluids found uh, in your brain uh, or the fluids uh, in, uh, in surrounding the spinal cord. Now this use of the word compartment can be misleading. It's not as though each compartment was like a Tupperware and that the water didn't move freely from one compartment to another. We call these compartments but water moves freely through cells and from one part of the uh, extracellular fluid to another. So uh, K2 
keep that in mind uh, as we go along, that the fluids move freely from one compartment to another. Another division can be made uh, that division between the plasma inside the vascular system and the rest found outside the vascular system. So keep that in mind uh, as well. We have intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid and in the extracellular fluid compartment we have various places where we find that water. In this slide we see that water has been lost from the extracellular fluid compartment. When that happens, the solute concentration increases in that compartment. In other words, the osmolarity goes up. Remember that osmolarity is a term that refers to the amount of stuff, or solute, that's dissolved in water. If you remove just the water, the solute concentration goes up. Like if you had Kool-Aid and you took water out of the Kool-Aid, the Kool-Aid would be darker and sweeter. So if you remove water from the extracellular compartment, you increase the osmolarity, and now you have a situation where the osmolarity in the extracellular fluid compartment is greater than the osmolarity in the intracellular fluid compartment. And because water can travel freely through the cell membrane, water will be drawn out of the cells into the extracellular fluid compartment. It will continue to move until the osmolarity inside the cell is equal to the osmolarity in the fluids surrounding the cells. Similarly, if we add water to the extracellular fluid compartment, we have diluted that solution, the osmolarity goes down, and now we have extra water in the extracellular fluid, and because the osmolarity is lower, that is the concentration of water is higher, it will move from the intracellular fluid into the cells by osmosis. If you start with a normal total body water content, that means that homeostasis, the maintenance of a constant internal environment, requires that the water that you take in has to equal the water that you lose. So water in equals water out. So where does this fluid come from? Well, quite simply, the main source for uh, fluid in is the water that we drink. And the main determinant of our water loss is usually determined by the kidney, and that is the urine that we lose. So again, this is quite simple, yet it's very important that you understand. Water in is the water that you drink, water out is determined by your urine outflow, and water regulation is determined by our old friend antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone causes your kidney to retain water. We'll look at how next week, but for now just remember that antidiuretic hormone causes water retention. And so if your total body water is low, antidiuretic hormone will be secreted. Or another way to look at it, if your body water content is low, that means that you have insufficient water for the amount of solute in your body. 
In other words, your body tissues are too concentrated. We can also refer to that as a high osmolarity. So another way to look at this is to say, when your osmolarity is high, antidiuretic hormone is secreted because antidiuretic hormone causes you to retain water. And if you have insufficient water, you want to retain water. And so you will secrete antidiuretic hormone. Remember that antidiuretic hormone is made in the hypothalamus and released by the posterior pituitary. Now, if you add water, if you have excess water, then the total body water increases and the osmolarity goes down because you've added water to the uh, amount of normal amount of solute in the body. Think again of Kool-Aid. If you add water to the Kool-Aid, the Kool-Aid is dilute. Now in that case, the antidiuretic hormone secretion goes down. The kidney does not want to retain water, it wants to excrete water in order to bring the body back into balance. Now what do you expect would happen if you added salt to the body? Well, if you added salt to the body, if say you drank a concentrated salt solution, the body osmolarity would go, well what do you think? Yes, the body osmolarity would go up. And if the body osmolarity goes up, you want to retain water, and so the antidiuretic hormone concentration will go up as well. How about this one? You remove water from the body. Let's say you're outside and you're working and it's a very hot day, and though the normal way that we uh, regulate our water content is through the kidney, you might uh, lose great amounts of water um, by sweating. And so if you removed excess, uh, an excessive amount of water that way, the total body water content would of course go down. And because you've removed water and not solute, the osmolarity would go up. Again, think of Kool-Aid. If you have a jar of Kool-Aid and you have some way to just take the water out of the Kool-Aid, what you wind up with is thicker, sweeter Kool-Aid. Now in that case, the body is going to want to retain water, not lose any more. And so the antidiuretic hormone concentration would go up. And that's about all I have to say on this concept of water balance. It can be a little complicated, but the way to look at it is to always remember this concept of osmolarity. That osmolarity refers to the amount of stuff or solute dissolved in the water. If you have too much stuff dissolved, if your osmolarity is too high, then you want to retain water. And if that's the case, you would secrete antidiuretic hormone because it would cause the kidney to hang on to water. If on the other hand your osmolarity was too low because you had excess water, then you would want to excrete water. Antidiuretic hormone, just think of the word, antidiuretic. That means it stops you from losing water. If you have excess water, you don't want that to be stopped and so the antidiuretic hormone secretion would go down in the case of excessive body water. And now we'll look at electrolyte balance.